All right, if you want a kind of step-by-step -step thing to write down for these problems, here it is. Uh, we're gonna go through, we're gonna keep things short today. Uh, we're gonna go through one or two problems just to kind of remind you of the process of how it works. So step one, we write the given information. So we write what kind of shape it is and what other information you're given. The shape it is should give you a number of sides and hopefully you have at least one measurement. Step two, find the central angle. Remember that's gonna be 360 divided by the number of sides. And then we usually split that in half. Step three, you're gonna solve for the missing pieces. Again, usually that involves some trig. And then step four, plug it all in to the one half ASN formula. All right, let's do it. Uh, one more example of this. Um, we have our area equals one half ASN, and we have one shape. What shape? It's a square. So we have A equals S equals N equals. Now we have an issue. We don't have the apothem, we don't have the side length. Um, we of course have our number of sides, which is four. It does have four sides, uh, but we don't have the other information because the apothem is dropped down perpendicular here, and here is our side length. Okay, so those are the two pieces that we're looking for. And we don't have either of them. Uh, what we have, what we have here is called the radius. And it is called, uh, you might have written that down on the last, uh, when we wrote down the formula, it was there. It's called the radius because if I, um, take this and put it inside of a circle, then that eight would be the radius of that circle. So that's why this distance is called a radius because it is a radius of a circle that's relevant to the problem. But what it is not is our apothem or our side length. So we need to keep that in mind. So that's our step one. We've written down the information that we know. Step two, find the central angle. To find the central angle, we're gonna take 360, divide it by our number of sides, which is four. That's 90, but remember that that is, uh, that that would be this entire angle. And so to get the angle we actually are, care about, we're gonna cut that in half to get 45. So we take 360 divided by the number of sides, and then we're gonna cut that in half. So that's a 45 degree angle. So I could do this as a 45, 45, 90. I could do this as a 45, 45, 90, uh, but I'm not going to, in this case, I will show the trig so that you can see how the trig works. But just know that doing the 45, 45, 90 is, it would take you about 10 seconds versus the about three or four minutes that it's gonna take us to do the trig. If you know your 45, 45, 90 pattern. In fact, I might do it later so that you can see. But what we do know is that this radius here is eight. And so, what we know in each of these cases is our hypotenuse. So we know the hypotenuse. Um, I'm going to start by solving for the apothem. We know the hypotenuse. And in this case, we know the hypotenuse and we would want our adjacent. 
I'm going to call this A for my apothem. So we know our hypotenuse, we want our adjacent. So if we have hypotenuse and want adjacent, we're going to use cosine. So cosine of my angle equals our adjacent, which we don't know. Adjacent goes on top. Hypotenuse goes on the bottom, which is 8. To get rid of my fraction, I'm going to multiply by what's on the bottom, 8. So 8's cancel, and I have my apothemine 8 cosine of 45. Is A by itself? Oh, yes. Then I'm done, and I have solved for my apothem. Now, I'm going to get 8 cosine of 45. And that's going to be around 4.2. So that's getting our apothem. Now I want you to get the piece of our side length that we want. So now we still have our hypotenuse being eight. We're using a hypotenuse so that we can keep our answer exact here. Uh, we still have our hypotenuse being eight, but now we're trying to solve for our opposite. So we know that hypotenuse, we want our opposite. So I'll give you about a minute to work through and solve for what x is going to be. Okay, this time I will use a part of the 45, 45, 90 pattern, which is that my legs in the 45, 45, 90 should be the same. So you should have gotten the same thing for x that we got for A, which now that I'm in degree mode is around the 5.7. But that is not, that is not my side length because remember that is only this piece of the side. So to get the entire side, we're gonna take two times that. So I'm gonna take that answer that I got and I'm gonna double it. So we have 5.7 over here. We have 11.3 as my side length. So now we can plug in all of our pieces and get our area. Um, notice that I've kept all my values exact. So I didn't do two times the 5.7. I did two times the answer that I got out of my calculator, that exact decimal. That's why it's 11.3 here and not 11.4. That's why it came out to be 11.3, because that's what that des exact decimal rounded to. And if you keep that exact decimal even further, if you keep that exact decimal even further, then what you'll see is that we should, when I multiply all this out, get exactly, you'll notice I put equals because I'm not approximating, this would be exactly 128. 
and that happens because both of these distances involve square root of two. So when, uh, that's because of the 45, 45, 90 pattern. And so if you take here and multiply a thing with square root of two times square root of two, you're gonna get square root of two times square root of two is two, no more square roots, no more approximations. It would be exactly 128. If you have a slight rounding error, then I'm not gonna be super picky on that. But if you keep it exact until the end of the problem, it does make a little bit of a difference in the answer that you get. And in this case, it gives you an exact answer. So thing to take away from this one is pay attention to whether it is coming to um, a vertex, a corner, in which case it is, uh, it is my radius, it is not any of my distances that go into the formula, or whether it's that height drop down, in which case it's my apophony. Right? I'm gonna do one more here. It's gonna go a lot quicker. The reason this is gonna go a lot quicker is because we're gonna have all the pieces that we need. We're gonna have all the pieces that we need, so I just need to uh, uh, give a rough sketch of a, of a pentagon here. There we go. There's my beautiful drawing, hand drawn. All right, so we have each side of the building is 921 feet long. And the apothem is 633.8. Well, that's handy, they gave us everything we needed. So this shouldn't be too hard. Uh, number of sides on the Pentagon, five. Side length. 921, and then our apothem is 633.8. One half our apothem times our side length times our number of sides. So our apothem was the 633.8. Our side length was the 921. Number of sides was five. So we're gonna take and multiply all that out. And I'm gonna do that. Ah, that's fine, okay equals, I get 9324.5. All right, and we wanna label this feet squared? Yes, feet squared, because we are finding an area. So there are some problems, in fact, there were some problems on the homework last night where you should have just been given the apothem and the side length and you could just plug it all in. There were a couple of those problems. There were also a couple of those problems on the homework last night where you had to actually uh, work with the trig and get the measurements out. Oh, one more thing, perimeter. It says to find the perimeter as well. 
Perimeters add up all the sides, and all the sides are 921. And how many of them are there? Five of them. So we have two, three, four, five. which gives me 4,605 feet squared? No, this time it's a perimeter. So it is a distance, it should be in feet.